Welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Reclamation Project where we believe in no soul left behind. Man, it's been a while. Um, it seems like it's only been a month, but I don't know, for some reason, it feels like it's been longer than that since we've been here on screen. Today, we've got a topic that is uh, to call it controversial would be an understatement. Mm -hmm. Can followers of Jesus reconcile their faith with membership in sororities and fraternities? From ancient Greek rituals of Greek gods um, to altars and idols in modern day mm -hmm. initiation ceremonies, we'll explore the intersection of religious beliefs and Greek life. Are these organizations merely brotherhoods of God-fearing Christians, or do they harbor darker secrets? So let's unpack the debate over whether participation in these groups align with Christian values. Today, we've got the panel here. We're going to delve into this controversial topic. We've got in the top right corner, the professor, Professor Michael Buffington. Good to see you, my brother. Uh, just keep focused on the road. <laughs> you already know that. We got Pastor Trey Hayden, the third pastor. Come on, good to see you, man. Hey, praise the Lord. East Coast meets West Coast. West Coast. Jesus. We're back. Amen. Again. Amen. Yes. Amen. So you know, we're just we're just gonna get straight into it. You know, sororities and, prefer, uh, and and fraternities. I remember when I went off to college for the first time um they caught my interest you know what caught my interest more than anything i believe was the stepping you mm -hmm. know people who know me knows that you know i'm a dancer i i, I love to dance All right. and stepping certainly got my attention and um i highly considered doing it you know i can't recall what got in the way maybe it was just my studies in engineering it just really monopolized my time and i just didn't have time to do it but uh, I never did, but the appeal was there. So mm -hmm. I'm not the only one, you know. I I'm certainly know that uh, that lots of people see it, and you know they go talk with them on campus. They see the events that they do, or they go to a step show, and and they say to themselves, "I want to be a part of that." Uh, I didn't know then. I know more now than I did then, but mm -hmm. I had no clue then. Mm. about some of the goings on yes, uh, Lord. in order to in order to become one uh hence where we get the phrase and the idea secret society mm. if 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 you will so i was wondering i guess we can open up with with it uh with anyone who wants to share whether you like um like myself anybody here ever came close to doing it, or was it always a no or uh, where, where do you, where did you guys stand on that? Just want to shout out to Sharon. Come on, <laughs> sis. Yes, yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. I guess I'll put myself on blast first. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to a Adventist. I went to a Christian college, and uh, a bunch of us from the D.C. Maryland area. Um, when we arrived there, we saw that there were some frats since it's not the kind, I guess, uh, globally known or even nationally known, uh, some may uh, some may try to punk it by saying it's a veggie frat, but <laughs> 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 never, nevertheless, uh, it still had it, many of what the regular secular schools had. And I was actually a founder when the original uh, founders of Gamma Psi Gamma, uh, which is a fraternity uh, at, in college. Um, uh, those who know me, you know. <laughs> those who don't, mean I know what, what, what I'm talking about without putting it all on blast. I do want to say I've experienced a lot and I'll be willing to contribute what I can today. So it, that's going to make for a very interesting conversation here because we got we got a founding member of one. So, uh, man, it's going to be interesting. Anybody else want to share? Mm. All right. So uh, that's all right. We'll leave that right there. So let's 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 get right to it. Um, recently, I just seem to be seeing a lot more testimonies of individuals who were once a part 
who later denounced it and for reasons mm. that they say they did not know that that's what they were getting into. And as mm. they, in their later life, developed a closer walk with God, reconciled that, 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 they, that the two mm. can't um, coexist. Now, mm. if Pastor Trey is saying that he started one, I'm curious as to how, um, you know, I'm curious about, you know, how his organization uh, contrasts to some of the more uh, global um, Greek organizations. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm compelled to believe that, you know, it's it's got to be different. I, you know, I could believe that not all are created equal and that they're not all doing the same things. But the ones that I've heard testimonies being given, and I've got some clips that we're going to play here and we'll talk about um that these are the ones that people are saying no nah, it's it's there's there's not compatibility so to that mm. question let's, let's answer that first question is can fraternities and sororities uh have compatibility with christianity Ooh, really? <laughs> i mean that's from, a good question go ahead doc oh sorry from what i understand i mean I, i'm not uh, deeply on the origins of the Greek uh, fraternities and sororities, but from what I understand, the origin is very dubious. Um, so um, it seems, you know, Paul was very clear. He said, how can the light have fellowship with the darkness, mm. you know? And, you know, I, I don't know much about the fraternities, but I do know a little bit. And one of the things that I know is very common, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is... Uh, when somebody is a pledge in one of these fraternities, there's often some very, uh, very intense hazing rituals that are part of the initiation rites of that particular fraternity. And oftentimes these rituals involve very degrading activities. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when when you when you look at, you know, when you become a part of the the, the family of God, right? Um, and you are initiated into the family of God, I don't see any sort of degrading rituals happening to somebody to bring them into the fold. Um, whereas when you look at some of these other things, they're very degrading. And some of them, when you look at, like I have studied like some of the darker ones, like skull and bones and things like that. And a lot of their rituals in, in, involve uh, very based like sexual acts, some of them including homosexual acts and things like that. Um, so, so there's some very dark, um, and, and, and actually some of them also include satanic things, openly satanic things as well. So, um, I'm sure there are some that are more dark than others, but uh, when you see a lot of the very strange things that people have to do to become a part of this fraternities, it, it makes you wonder whether or not this is, uh, like any, any thinking Christian would want to be a part of something like this. Right. You know what? To the, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor Trey. I'm going to queue well, up a I'll video. See. Yeah, um, you're definitely correct with that, Doc. Um, just the mere fact that it's exclusive, that should tell you something right there, where uh, the gospel is inclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, this is secret. So, And that's for intent and purpose, by the way. Right. So that others, not only do they not know, they can't know unless they get in. Um, whereas the gospel is supposed to be spread around the whole world. And actually, everything that people love about the fraternities and sororities, uh, which there's a lot of good to it also, uh, but everything they love about it can actually be attained in the body of Christ. Um, they love the brotherhood, the sisterhood. They love the camaraderie. Mm. They love um, having people to have their back. Um, they do a lot of great things, both for the school and for the community, a lot of fundraising and a lot of um, a wonderful things. They, they give a sense of belonging and association for people who don't have friends or and for those who already have friends, uh, they make more. All these things are wonderful, but, it's, but, but there's that dark side of it. Even long before the hazing, there's a, you got to cross that line, baby. Um, mm -hmm. they don't just right. see, they don't even see you out there. You can't just show up mm -hmm. and then go straight to the hazing. No, if you don't cross that line, you're not even never going to even make it to the chance to get to 
the place of hazing. And what that is, is there's a lot of marching. There's a lot of um, following directions of the orders. It's kind of like boot camp. And um, you have to have a special name. You have to memorize different things about the organization. You have to, you will be tested. And then, um, and a lot of it is belittling. You are subjecting yourself to others who are training you, teaching you uh, that you don't really have the option of saying no. And then, I know that sounds a bit crazy, but if you really want to stay in the organization, no is not really a word. So no basically just means, well, then step out, you're out. Because um, right. whatever they they tell you to do, whatever they need you to do is essential to be a part of that group. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that kind of conformity is dangerous because, and when it's secret, nobody else knows. So there's no one that outside the group to protect you or to counsel you. So you can get sucked into a situation where because you want to belong, because you want to have status, trust me, these organizations have some major status yeah. um, where mm -hmm. people look at you differently and wherever you are, you know, you have dozens and sometimes even hundreds of people that uh, they put their life on the line for you to back you up. That means a lot to a lot of people and they don't want to just lose that quickly. So um, this, this is a good segue, and I love the way you highlighted these differences between um, Christianity and the, the, the tenets, the benefits of, uh, of being a part of the, the body of Christ versus the benefits of being um, in a frat, how you said that one is inclusive, the other is exclusive. Uh, but the benefits that you're able to get, the rewarding feeling of giving back and brotherhood and sisterhood, they're all present in the body of Christ also. So, you know, perhaps there's something that 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 the other side is doing that that they uh, consider invaluable that they're not getting, um, mm -hmm. you know, out of the body of Christ. And that's why they they do that. Now, um, it leads me to uh, my thoughts to, um, you know, being in an organization where you get some. Uh, you know, I've heard stories about people getting off. Um, you know, if, if a judge is one of your one, one of your mm -hmm. frat brothers, you, you know, mm -hmm. you might you might get off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's a benefit that that people want out of life. Um, mm -hmm. Getting free stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's a pass into the uh, you know uh, San Francisco Forty mm -hmm. ers game or or what have you. So you know, the the benefits to it. Um, but when you mention the the hazing. That sets us up for this video. I want to show. I want to. I want to play about a uh, not a minute of a clip of this brother who renounced his frat, and um, he talks about a little bit of what he had to go through. Um, and this is this is um, uh, this is a video from a channel by Lala Jenkins. And so I just want to give credit to her. Uh, he was an Omega Sci-Fi Q, uh, which actually was the frat that I was going to uh, pledge wow. back in the day. But let's hear That's what he talked about. a very popular one, too. Here and and uh, we were all just a bunch of, a bunch of guys, you know, just kind of at the uh, party. And they would, like, call us up individual to go upstairs, you know, to this room. <laughs> and sitting in this room, um, one of the guys uh, is like sitting on the bed. Another guy's like behind me and he's like asking me, Chris, so you want to be an Omega, huh? I'm like, yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, okay. And out of nowhere, the guy just backhand slaps me. Wow. What? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when he slapped me hitting the bed, like, because he hit me that hard. And I like got myself I'm, I'm injured I, I I'm like dude just let me get up out of here and I wind up leaving the room you know um I, I think he was somewhat concerned I don't know if he was really concerned about if he you know hurt me or whatever but um, I left the party that day and I was like yeah I don't know if this is gonna be what I'm gonna be doing 
Okay, so he said that uh, he wasn't <laughs> sure at that moment whether he would, but he did eventually come back and cross the line. I've got another mm -hmm. clip I'll play of his. But so we talk about the hazing, the physical contact. You know, of course, we've heard in the news over the years where they've been catching a lot of flack uh, for doing that um, mm -hmm. and that, you know, um, universities were working to curb that. But from what I understand, that, that, that they haven't curbed anything. Um, he often jump in something real quick about that. There's a reason for that. Um, you know, you have to be dedicated, you have to be committed, you have to be tough, you have to be willing to uh, endure anything to prove your loyalty to the group. That was just a test. Then, I guess at that moment, he didn't pass. Um, most Greek, Greek societies have paddles. It's for a reason um, that where the Greek letters are on it. Um, yeah, we got hit. Um, yeah, we went through a crossover night or hell night. But <laughs> after all those experiences of line, of hazing, crossover and all that, it bonds you closer to each other when you've all been traumatized to get in it together. So you have one thing that links you all that was the, the traumatic experience of crossing over. So your line is bonded for life. So then you take that wherever you go. And um, now you know this person's not a punk. He's not a sellout. He's not going to cry and run and tell his parents or the school or whatever. Because they went through all that. So now the organization is, is secret. They know they can do everything else. Mm. And also you're not going to run and tell nobody. And um, that's why they do that. Some of the reasons. Got yeah, it. Got I, it. I, I would have, um, I would have failed that test. Because <laughs> that's, that's just the beginning. Just getting slapped like that one time. Oh, that's no. it. Please. See, as a young man, I knew who I was. I, I remember who I was as a young man. I'd have put feet and hands on homeboy. Uh, but, <laughs> but you but know, see, if they, they know if you want it or not. If you want it bad enough or not. That's what the thing is. Right. And yeah. and see. The thing is, is, you know, this is this is um, the interesting part, because any situation where you have to um, where you have to sacrifice your self-respect and your manhood and allow yourself to be degraded and abused is is crazy, you know, and, and especially for a Christian. Um, and, you know, it's very similar, like everything that you're describing is very similar to gang culture. You know, I grew up. I grew up in the streets. T probably understands this, but um, you know, I grew up in the streets, and I I was a part of a gang as a very young man. I was jumped mm. into a gang, um, and everything that you're talking about is is very reminiscent of that. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that is very reminiscent of is of the spiritual exercises of Ignatius Lo Loyola. Okay. Uh, so Ignatius Loyola, who was the founder of the founder Jesuits, the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. yes, he, he created these spiritual exercises in the 16th century specifically designed to degrade and break people down to the point where they would be obedient at all yeah. costs. Um, and they would be willing to do anything so as long as it advanced the cause of the order. And these people run the world today. And so when I look at all mm -hmm. of that happen in these Greek societies, in these secret societies like the Masons, the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Malta, things like that. It's all the same thing. And Marines got their cues from it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and when you look at what the Jesuit Order stands for, it's it's very alarming that mm -hmm. uh, that these people are being put through the exact same thing. Are they being right. mentally prepared to something or be indoctrinated into something even more dubious and no more nefarious? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. How else would you know that they're going to be loyal? How else would you know that you can do anything with them at this point moving forward unless right. you have these kinds of rituals that make or break, you know, and a lot of people have tried and have never joined, then they're like, hey, that's good because we don't want nobody we can't trust. We don't want no one that's going to be putting all our stuff on blast later anyway. So, and that's what I was saying, like boot camp. I don't know if anybody was in the military or not, but um, they got some, 
some tough what, things in boot camp too that could be similar to, to hazing in what, its own way. But watch this, watch this. I see where you're going and it's a great point for our viewers to ponder. At the same time, you gotta ask yourself, this brother was in there for 20 years and then he decided to get out. So the loyalty mm -hmm. that they thought they had established through all of this. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't the only thing that he experienced because he also experienced, he said, um, he got the paddle as well. And uh, his line got the paddle so bad, so cold that they got sent to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and then on another occasion, he got hit over the back of his head. He said they call it getting some neck or something like that, either mm -hmm. getting some neck or a neck in oh, him or whatever. Wow. It popped him over the back of his neck. He said it, he got hit so hard that his throat closed up and he couldn't breathe. He had to go to the hospital for that. But he still ended up going back because he had a brother. His older brother was acute. And so he Ooh. he just he was just going he was just going to fight it out. He's going to fight it out and 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 do it. He ended up crossing and becoming one like I said. But eventually all of that did not result in lifetime loyalty. My guy got closer to God and said, you know what? Mm, as I look back over Man. things that I went through, uh, I don't see compatibility. I got to bounce. And I'm like seeing testimony after testimony, people on YouTube now. I mean, folks are coming forward. They've been in it for 30 years and they're all renouncing it. They're like, nah, uh-uh. And they're, and they're telling. I'm wondering what alpha male crossed the line, man, because I just couldn't do it. Right. I, just, I, just, I cannot do it. My natural reaction is to respond to that. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you, T. I, 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 you know, I was talking to you earlier, Stan, about um, how I kind of ended up as I was digging to, um, you know, brush up on this and be prepared. Ended up going down a, a, um, a real serious um, rabbit hole, so to speak. And so I, I learned some interesting terms um because i didn't know much of anything really outside of stepping and whatnot what have you and you know branding and tattoos and come to find out all um fraternities and sororities don't subscribe to branding and tattoos but some interesting points that came up um these two words one word is an uh, an archon a grand archon um and so the archon is a greek word that means ruler and it's frequently used as a title of a specific public office, right? Um, I, I found that to be um, quite contrary for me as a Christian to allow myself to subscribe to someone else as my 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 ruler. And the other other um, um, term was the grand polemark. Now this one I found really interesting. So the polemark was a um, from obviously ancient Greece. Athens specifically. Uh, a polemarch was a senior military title in various ancient Greek city-states. And the title is derived from the words polemos and archon, and it translates, here's where the problem is, people. It translates as war leader or warlord, right? And so, you know, I sat there when I, as I'm reading these definitions and, and I'm trying to see how you know, a, 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 a practicing Christian could rationalize this to harmonize with the tenets of their uh, religious beliefs. And I'm sorry, I just, I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't see how, how this was possible. And then real briefly, I'll say, you know, I look particularly into um, what is a predominantly African-American um, fraternity, uh, Sigma Pi Phi fraternity, also known as the Boule. And so Boule actually breaks down to an to ancient Greece and originally known as the Council of Chiefs. And so the more I started going into this thing, the more I started seeing that it was starting to stray further and further away from um, Christianity as I know it. So that's a good segue. Let me play this clip of another young lady who was uh, a Delta, Delta uh, Sigma Theta, which okay. just so happens to be the sister of sorority to mm -hmm. Omega Psi Phi. And she was sharing uh, some of the things that they have to do. And so take a listen to this. Good, because I 
always want to know about a duck process. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they actually made us hold our ankles and walk around as a duck and quack and um, teach us the different things. I can't remember everything as far as like what it, all the different things mean, but we would have to quack and we would hold bricks, um, different things like they would make us hold our Minerva, tell us that we have to look up to Minerva um, mm. because Minerva is held at a higher standard or something like that. Mm. And it was just a lot of different things. They would just tell us about Minerva, basically, like kind of teach us about her and why we reverence her in a way. So it was kind of weird, but I never thought too much into it. Mind you, I was you know, brought up in church, but I never really had like a full relationship with God to understand. I just had religion, basically. So that's key right there. I don't know if you pay attention to what she said at the very end. It did rub her the wrong way. She mm -hmm. thought it was weird because she had grown up in the church mm -hmm. and had spent time in the church. But because she didn't have a, a close walk with God mm -hmm. that and rather just had religion, if you will, that that's how she was able to continue on with mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, OK, so that's going to be important in, in the remainder of our conversation. But listen to what she says in the beginning that she's doing what? Right. That she's holding some position and giving paying homage to Minerva, who was the equivalent. That, that's a that was a Roman god. Um, it was a Roman god and it was the equivalent of Athena and uh, the Greek uh, gods pantheon. But she's holding her ankles to prospect. Can, can I make uh, a point? Holding her ankles to uh, holding her ankles to do the duck walk—that was one thing. But then okay. every now and then, okay. uh, they also had it to, to I guess, stop, break, and uh, pay some homage to Minerva. What that—that's yeah. that—that's idol worship. That's worship of another god. There is no compatibility, right, right. with that in Christianity. Period. Right. Let's get yeah. that clear right now. Oh, yeah. uh, we don't need to need, need to even finish the conversation uh, here on this sure. panel. That is not compatible with so, Christian values. So that <laughs> lends itself to, like I said, I went down this rabbit hole. And so I ended up for that same uh, uh, Kappa um, chapter, I ended up on a, on a chat forum that they had, right? And so, you know, obviously people didn't use their real names. And so um, there was an individual on there that referred to themselves as uh, Prana Kether, right? And, I, you know, I thought it was weird. But I kept scrolling through, you know what I mean, looking at, you know, the various exchanges and whatnot, what have you. And then I found out what that actually meant and what it entailed. So prana is the source of vitality and life and um, for all forms of the material plane. This is pranic e energy or pranic ether. And we could not coexist without it for a moment. It says that pranic ether is not a widely recognized term in mainstream scientific or spiritual context. However, prana is a concept in Hindu yogic philosophy that mm -hmm. refers to the life force or vital energy that permeates the universe and sustains all living beings. And then mm -hmm. further, ether historically referred to the material that filled the universe beyond Earth's atmosphere in ancient Greek philosophy. So what we're talking about is spiritualism. Or oh, in yeah. a nutshell, and, and Trey, I'm going to let you jump in. In a nutshell, they are practicing uh, Hindu rituals while uh, masking it as compatible yes. with Christianity. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. I think we fail to realize or remember probably what it was like when we were young, um, we all were susceptible to all kinds of pressures, peer pressures, as well as beliefs. And the thing is, when you're trying to get in, you don't read too much into any of that stuff. Um, you, at that age, you're still a bit immature. Um, and you just, you're just looking at the benefits it can bring you and that, hey, my friends are in there or a cute girls in the, in the, um, the sorority connected to that fraternity. And um, you can really care less about all the other deeper behind the scene meanings because you don't think it's that deep. Uh, when we get older and more mature, then we recognize, you know what? Everything matters <laughs> and stuff yeah. is for keeps. This, this, it's not a joke. 
You, so, mm -hmm. I mean, you take on different names, mostly that's forced upon you. During, while you're online, they'll give you a name based off of how you performed or how you didn't perform. <laughs> and that's your nickname. It could turn into an alter ego. Um, and it could cause you to act in ways you never would otherwise act because of the pressure put on you. And some people like it because it helps them to become more than they were. Um, I agree with you, Terry. I like social media today. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, initially anybody, you getting popped in the face, you getting hurt, beat with a paddle. Wait a minute, hold on a second. You know what I mean? Like, yo, am I a kid? Yeah, I'm not real like that. You know, mm -hmm. no, trust me, you got some of the hardest dudes in there, but they've been through it. But the thing is, is that to be able to withstand reacting and responding and to not do what's normal uh, for someone in that situation, that's part of the breaking process, break to break you down in order to build you back up. Which means that if you let someone hit you, that's almost like the ultimate trust that I'm putting in you, like I'm willing that, you know, to, to let my face become a punching bag to the person I'm going to then afterwards call my big brother. Um, so that I'm, that's you putting, saying, I'm gonna put my trust in you, even if you beat me, I'm gonna, still, I'm gonna trust you that, that there's a, a bigger meaning and a bigger purpose in all of this at the end. And so at the end, then you recognize and they congratulate you. You made it, you made it, you soared, got, I, you know, been discharged from the hospital, you know, licking your wounds and everything else, picking your face and you're getting your trying to get whatever semblance of pride back. And then they congratulate you. Hey, you one of us now. And um, that's, that's the, pers the purpose of it. But that sounds like that sounds like idolatry. That sounds like. In essence, that person ha has become your God. Sure. You know, I'm reminded when you were talking, I'm reminded of this movie came out around 2007, Stump the Yard. My family and I, we've watched it numerous times, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a specific moment in the film where uh, Columbus Short's character is being solicited by uh, um, two main uh, um, fraternities because this guy can, you know, he can right. really dance and whatnot, what have you. But he responds to the second frat. He said, man, all you, he said, the first frat came to me with a sweet deal, but all you're offering me is, is, a, is a brotherhood. And listen to the response. The brother, the archon, the, <laughs> uh, the brother that's in charge, he says, listen, you can leave here is another educated brother from the hood, and that's cool. He said, but if you pledge with us, it's a worldwide brotherhood. My thing, my thing is this. Now, Columbus, his character never uh, 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 portrayed himself as being Christian, but for those of us that, that are, and you find yourself in that situation, when is it being a Christian enough? Mm. Why do I need you? Mm -hmm. When isn't Christ enough? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then, you know, I so, never pledged to, to, to a fraternity or anything like that. I never had the opportunity. And I don't imagine with my personality that I would. And I feel comfortable saying that. And the thing is, I won't get into my life and the life that I lived before. But I didn't rub elbows with some cats that's in did some dirt where, you know, you just watch how a cat move. You see what I'm saying? And you can pull up his paperwork and see what time it is with him. And, you know, you know, what I mean, man, I can I can ride mm -hmm. with this cat or I, or I can't. And it ain't about slapping somebody in the face or getting hit with a paddle or, or nothing like that. You know, what I mean, I, man. So, you know, you come back to the point that I was said that we come back to um, a little bit earlier. And that was when she said, when the sister said in the video clip that we played, that she had grown up in the church. This is at the point that she, um, she crossed and became a Delta. 
Mm. that she had gone through the rituals the through the through the uh the traditions of the customs week to week going to church but she didn't have a relationship with god got you and so things rubbed her the wrong way that she was experiencing but it wasn't enough for her to say no it took later on when she got closer to god that when she looks back and examines everything that she's gone through and what she's required to do, she then is able to say, no, nah, this is not compatible. So is there a point that perhaps that there are many who find compatibility with Christianity, their Christianity and being a part of a, a Greek is because of their level of understanding of God and what he wants from us at that point in time. I don't know. That's just something that, you know, that we could probably further I'll, another conversation, but I'll like you that. and like you and professor, uh, uh, B, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not wired that way. Like when I was, when I was, um, showing interest, like, the line that uh, that I was seeing, you know, at the time, you know, they were doing they had to do crazy stuff on campus. You know, they were together. They had to wear certain clothes. They couldn't talk to anybody. Um, you know, they they had chains around ropes around their necks, you know, being, uh, <laughs> like like they were dogs, yeah. you know, to the other members. Mm -hmm. You know, in my mind, I said, OK, that ain't me either. But, you know, I might <laughs> be able to do I might be able to do that. But the laying hands part, I wouldn't be able to do that either because like the two of you, you know, I grew up in Jefferson Park in South Central LA and that's reminiscent of, of gang initiation also. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't right. I didn't do it then. So I, I wasn't gonna be willing to uh, be a part of that either. So, you know, it's just interesting to sort of talk about what type of mindset, maybe there's a type of a mindset that goes into accepting this uh but we're focusing on the violence part that is violence we're focusing on the violence part i just so this is true it's a real life story so in 93 i was out in washington in the washington dc maryland area i'm staying out there for a while and um i'm a young guy in my early 20s and so i, I stumbled onto the to the campus of howard university mm. I some friends i knew from out here from the west coast from Berkeley and whatnot, what have you. Um, but the, the funniest thing happened, and this is where I feel like um, even without violence, uh, the idea of a sorority or a fraternity, in my personal opinion, does not harmonize with the Christian world. Because I saw, and this is particularly obviously Howard is an HBCU. So I saw... A, a a one for one fraternity that was all darker complected brothers and then i saw another fraternity that they're funking with at war with that's lighter complected brothers and then i see another fraternity that's sitting off to the side like man they tripping and these are darker mixed with darker and lighter complected brothers. And so my conclusion is, <laughs> how can I subscribe to, a, to, to, to believing and rationalizing that my God would be okay with us having a problem with each other simply based upon the color of our skin? Wow. Colorism, that's what we doing? Colorism? <laughs> that's some Willie Lynch stuff, man. Right? And so, you know, but if you would have talked to any of those individuals and so, oh, and the sorority girls, they in the background and they stepping, you know, making little cat sounds. And I'm like, man, what is this? <laughs> but I'm like, wow, man, like it was like school day. Spike Lee really just jumped off the screen into man, real life. Real and life. I saw it and I was like, man, really, this what my people doing. But if you would have talked to any of them, they they really felt that way about that. Right. So I like this comment that Sharon posted. that what about legacy pledges, you know, suggesting that because your parents pledged that that might be some drive for mm. an individual to go ahead and do that. I'm going to play this clip because that's mm. something to think that's about. I'm question. sure that many people who fit in that category. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this young lady here. All of this um, kind of felt weird. Let me go ahead and find it. Let's see. She was at 27. She's going to she's going to touch on a little bit of that. But she's first is going to talk about um something else that she did so first remember she did the whole minerva thing 
Uh, I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen her do she it. She did it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, first, first paying homage and giving worship to another God mm. is one of the things that she had to do. Um, that she was instructed to do as and a Christian. Subtle. Yeah, that's that's actually a little bit more uh, uh, um, overt to me. I can see maybe they masked it. They said, "Oh, it's not a big deal." You know, it's right. just pretend. Right. But you, you know, you can't. Uh, God doesn't accept pretending uh, when doing certain things. That's right. True. But but remember that they don't. Again, they're not reading into it that serious. <laughs> like to say that, "Yo, I'm worshiping something." No, it's like, um, let's say you're the Lions and your football team or whatever. We're going to take on the attributes of the line. Let's roar, roar like a lion, whatever. You can do all this dumb stuff. Mm -hmm. So when it's time for, for the game, we out there and vicious. Mm -hmm. You know, but you're not. No, thinking. you're right. You know what I mean? Uh, it's kind of similar to that. No, no, that no. no it's right. kind of no, I, 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 and like it's a joke, but at the same time, you're all in the same mind thinking to take on certain attributes of whatever is called they don't even think it's bad to call a team the devils, you know. So what I'm saying is, yep. they don't they they don't no. they don't think they don't put any spirituality or any reference to what how they feel about God. No, I agree, and I get it that young minds often neglect to examine closely, mm -hmm. examine things that they're doing, mm -hmm. and 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 try to assess whether this is a violation, whether God would be happy with that, because they often will write things off as or explain things away as it was just pretend, it was just right. fun, just game. That's their mm -hmm. favorite go-to. But what mm -hmm. about when you got older adults who are pledging in graduate school? Now, they, right. they can't claim that, right. that whole young mind. Right. Uh, uh, oh, my it, God. Yeah, grandma it, pledging? But, but watch this. But watch this. At the same time, while I'm not, uh, I'm certainly not uh, handing down an indictment on, on every young person who decides to pledge that in your mind and in your I can't hear you. Lost for a second. It's a humming noise. Yeah. Now. No, that's good. There that's we bad. go. You can turn off our Isle of Pales. So, uh, I lost my thought. Where was that? Uh, what was the girl you're talking about? Okay. So, you know, I'm not land I'm not handing down an indictment on the heart of those individuals that they actually sought out to mm -hmm. worship other gods okay. in violation of the god of the universe and therefore violate their or taint their Christianity. However, what can be said about the act? Is there still such a thing as even if you in good heart were not trying to do something wrong that you have still violated them nonetheless mm -hmm. that you have still committed an offense against god mm -hmm. nonetheless true. so that that's important for those who are who are watching who are listening need to understand that even if your heart is right some things are still a violation god will that's forgive true. you but here's your opportunity now to get out of here but let's uh to get out of the organization if that's what they've got you doing but let me play this real quick because here's one more thing that i thought was just um uh, apropos while watching this young lady's testimony. It's called Invictus, which you probably are aware of it. And it says, I Oh, let me go back. I see, I think it's about right. Then of the line, she told us like, hey, we gotta learn this poem. And so the, the big sisters, one of the big sisters came over that night. And so this poem was written um, by an atheist, right? It's called Invictus, which you probably are aware of it. And it says, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. And in the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the burgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears, it looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, 
how charged with punishments to scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So I'm like, but I'm not though. <laughs> like what? Yeah. And then I'm like, why would this? Why would it say? I think whatever guys may be, I only serve one true living God, and that's what I was thinking. Like, why would we have to say that? And I feel like this poem is not. I understand they try to say, oh, it's so you can go through all these different things and know that you you can get through this and you got this and all the D9 organizations, they have to learn this. And it's not like by coincidence that we all have to learn this. Mm. Mm. So yep. she told that they had to learn that thing and that they were going to recite it. If I'm not mistaken, she said uh, a little bit later on that it was before an altar that they were reciting uh, oh that thing. And she talks also about some other stuff, uh, that there being an altar um, before which they were doing other things and idols were on the on the altar. Listen, listen, I don't know. Like, by the time... Like if you say the the whole Minerva thing is a joke and it's just oh you know it, and it gets downplayed okay all right that's one okay we can let one pass but now you keep adding to that now we're going before altars with idols and we're reciting <laughs> poems invoking right. gods any god that you want to come on now you can't keep uh you can't keep explaining these things away as just being right. a joke. Or it's just pretend and but just do it. That's how a lot of these organizations work. They they um, it's kind of like boiling a frog in a pot. Um, you know what they do is at the lower levels, um, the the lower initiates, lower level initiates don't mm -hmm. fully understand the true purpose and agenda of that particular secret society. You take the Masons, for example, it's mm -hmm. only to get up to the 31st, 32nd, right. 33rd degree that they take the oath to Lucifer, you see? So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll bring somebody in who thinks that they're just becoming a part of a community organization, a part of a mm -hmm. brother, finding a family, they're finding camaraderie. And as they begin to elevate um, in this organization, they begin to find out more and more. But what happens is they quiet their conscience because they don't want to lose their brotherhood, this camaraderie, because now their whole life revolves around this mm -hmm. secret society that they're in. And that's why John F. Kennedy said, and this is one of the things that I believe got him killed. He said in a speech, the very nature of a secret society is repugnant. Mm -hmm. so, so, but, but Mike, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree that also, when you come in, even at, at that bottom level, regardless of who brought you in, that slowly but surely you're being groomed, you know what I mean, so that you can uh, embrace and accept, you know, should you, I won't say God willing, but should you uh, um, attain that 31st, 32nd degree to go ahead. And by that point, you, you're just fully immersed. You're waist deep, not knee deep. You're waist deep in. Absolutely. And this is why to the... Um to the uh, person who asked the question about legacy pledges, you know, um, you know, it doesn't matter what your mother or father did. I mean, you look at King Josiah, um, his father was wicked, you know, King, I think it was King Ammon or something that was his father. He was wicked. King Josiah came along and enacted tremendous religious reform in the kingdom of Israel. So just because our parents did something or believed right. something, does it mean that we have to believe the same thing? In fact, my son, he's he's uh, uh, st at veterinarian school in Scotland. And there is a young lady that he met. She's from Maine. And um, this this uh, young lady's mother is a witch. I, and, and I mean a literal witch. I'm not saying like a nasty woman. I'm saying she's a literal witch, a practicing witch. Okay. And this and he's got this young lady studying the Bible and preparing to become a baptized Seventh Day Adventist. Ooh. So, what our parent, what Amen. our parents have chosen, the path that they have chosen, doesn't mm -hmm. have any bearing on our past. And ultimately, yeah. um, we're accountable for our own choices. And we can't say, "Well, you know, Lord, <laughs> I mean, I I would have done this, but Mom was a Beta Phi Kappa, whatever." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, I yeah. like I like that you said that though because one thing I I do want to I won't do want to leave out here on the table before we leave. With God, ignorance is not an excuse. Mm -hmm. Ignorance, I mean, you can't go in there saying 
you know, what, what, what I didn't know. And there, right. there, there, there are a number of different instances in the Bible where ignorance was not an excuse and a conse consequence still came. Well, because the bottom line is you didn't want to know. Mm. So, so the, 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 the information is out there, but you seek not to find it because of the benefits that you get. So it's like, you know, you like ignorance is bliss, but it's really not. You mm. know, my son went to the same college I did mm -hmm. and I had a couple of talks with him, but I never uh, pushed him or even encouraged him. Actually, I told him the good and the bad. And um, I've actually um, I've actually discouraged more people through the years that are Christians, because, I mean, we we put a religious spin on a lot of what we did because it was at a religious school. So uh, they gave me the nickname Big Brother Preacher. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to memorize a lot of things and, and we put some scripture in there also. Mm. But even still, there were there was a lot of things that were happening that was not representative of Christ. Um, but at the end of the day, whoever whatever group you're with, you're you're held responsible for the decisions and choices that you make that you will have to live with and face God with on judgment day. But Trey, can I it's hard. Yeah. Did you ever, in that experience, did you ever feel, I know this has been some time ago, but did you ever feel um, some sense of compromise based on your foundational beliefs, how you were brought up, and then you started, you know, I mean, venturing into this, for lack of better terms, this alternate uh, uh, um, type of thinking in terms of, you know, the parameters of, 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 the, of the fraternity? Did you at any point feel like, man, this 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 isn't really harmonizing? Right. And I think that's the deception of sin because it leads you slowly down a certain direction mm. until you finally have to wake up at some point in time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I justified it by saying, you know, okay, I'm the drummer of a gospel choir. Okay, I'm also the director of a drama group. Okay, I'm also a part of this task force for safety and security on campus. And I'm also a founder of the, of the, of the frat. So I, mm -hmm. I wore so many hats at every given day, whatever the event is, whatever hat I put on, that's how I operated at that moment. So but I didn't see it was that bad because I felt the compromises that I was making was to to get in to make a difference to try to insert mm -hmm. positivity and insert Christ and try to be a light in a, in a dark place. But if the whole system is designed to be dark, then you can't fix that. <laughs> mm. The only way you can fix yeah. that is because light and darkness can't abide in the same place at the same time. So. They, it got to a point in time where I couldn't roll with them. I couldn't step with them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't um, be involved in in all the things they did. And finally, I became totally inactive and was not practicing. But they were always my brothers and the sorority was always my sister. Even to this day, 35 years later, mm -hmm. you know, um, I still recognize them, my brothers and sisters, so forth and so forth. But they knew that I was no longer involved in all the in, in the meetings and inner workings and of everything that took place mm -hmm. because I just, I, in my good conscience, I couldn't do that. That happened after I was rebaptized okay. um, into my freshman year at that same college. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you make that point right there because it, it, there's a question that came to my mind that um, even though everything, I believe that your heart was right in the beginning, you guys had aimed to, to create a, 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 a similar framework for the organization, uh, Greek, Greek organizations, meaning doing, um, uh, doing community service, doing helping. Um, You're trying to make know. a Christian frat. Right, right, right. By by doing the extra things you did, you know, memorizing scripture and stuff like that. But I wonder if, if the, if this idea of a secret organization where you take oaths 
and you challenge each other's trust with one another, right. if, if it predisposes you to go down that dark, that, uh, that dark road, that you can't help it. Just the system, itself, the system itself is just conducive for moving mm -hmm. in that direction and not right. in the direction towards God. See, you got, I Absolutely. believe you have well intentioned in your heart um, and what you were trying to do. And you made it different than than the others. You guys weren't right. doing Minerva. Or I don't know. You didn't say you didn't. But I'm, <laughs> nope. assuming, I'm assuming you didn't do Minerva and, nope. and the others. Um, um, so, you you know, you, you showed yourself to be different from the others. Mm -hmm. But just the system of secrecy and the right. system of taking an oath and, you know, and, and whooping each other and. And saying that you know that's that's I just I just want to see if you if I if, if I'm gonna have your trust that that whole sort of thinking it just predisposes you to go down the dark road. Mm. Can we talk about that for just a second? Um, secretive was never God's way, mm -hmm. right? So whether you're in a business and there's some secret financial things going on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know whether it's in any kind of organization where, um, you know, it's so exclusive and then they can't justify or explain all the details, but you're just supposed to trust mm -hmm. certain people in the group. Um, mm -hmm. You're taking a tremendous risk and literally putting your, your whole life in someone else's hands in terms of the mental, the physical, the emotional, and the legal ramifications that could hit the fan later and now you have to try to explain to everybody why you did what you did or why you didn't say or speak up when you mm -hmm. could have or should have. And if and if the crap hits the oops, excuse me, if something hits the fan, if everything <laughs> goes bad, you can find yourself uh doing time, yeah, uh, yeah. paying great fines and suffering great penalties for going along with something that's not right. Man, that that is the truth. You know, we're at the top of the hour. We'll just go ahead. We'll start our rounds, um, give our final thoughts. Uh, there was something that, that Sharon said that I want to comment on. She said that there um, is even a poem like that, like the Invictus one that's read at a frat or, or sorority funeral um, till death. Uh, that's mm. too much. Give me Jesus. Wow. You know, there was an experience that I had. I had something similar. I went to a funeral for someone who was a Mason. Mm hmm. And it may not have been the first funeral of a Mason that I had been to, but it was certainly the first funeral that was conducted by the organization. And it was just the weirdest thing. It took place even in the church, but none of that mattered. The weirdness uh, to me as a Christian, because and when I say weird, there are any Masons who listen saying we're not weird. I, I believe you're not weird on a personal level. I'm sure you, I'd be cool with you. We could be cool and all that. But this ceremony that took place, uh, it fits in the category of weird to a person who is a part of the body of Christ who works for Jesus, who's an agent for God. And the things that they were reading, like Sharon commented on, I put my hand on my head and I said, really? I said, I said, really, that's, 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 that's how it goes down. I can't remember everything, but the stuff that we were reading in the Invictus it was uh, it was in, in Victor's poem. It was similar to that, invoking other gods, mm. uh, positing this uh, this uh, this belief that you have the power over fate and 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 destiny, and you're in control. Mm -hmm. I mean, total control of your life, and all you got to do is look inward. I said, okay, yeah, all right. Now I know. Now I know. Um, you might as well call upon the universe. I might as well call upon you. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and and why call yourself a Christian? Yeah, but just just drop the Christian label and just go ahead and follow. Whatever that is, call whatever that is. Go ahead and follow that. So you know, I just thought that was that was really weird. Um, you know, I think there was a masonic uh, funeral, huh? It was a it was a masonic funeral. It took place in a Baptist church. Um, no slight on 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 Baptist as a as a uh, right. denomination, right. but that's just where it was. Um, and they could have just been using the building. It could have been just using the building. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just thought that that was the weirdest, 
the weirdest thing. Um, but in a nutshell, you know, I think today, so my final thought is that um, there, there could be, you could be part of an organization that perhaps isn't doing all these things that we've described here today. Um, and that it's actually more akin to the, to the practices that Pastor Trey um, shared with us today. Um, and so, you know, I'm not here to judge your heart. I'm only here to say that, um, you know, that God has a different way of doing things, the whole secrecy, the exclusiveness. He's just not what he's about. And um, I don't know, you might want to re re reconsider, but especially if they, if, if you're being told you need to participate in stuff like what we've, what we've heard today, the Minerva invoking or paying homage to other gods, Greek mm -hmm. gods, or Greek gods, or Roman gods, or any other. Um, are you performing rituals before an mm. altar with their idols? Um, you know, that's 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 not God. That's not God. Agree. I'll, I'll let anybody else Agree. Go with it. Um, I guess I guess the last my last final word would just be first and foremost. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody on this panel agrees that. We're not against um, excellence. You know, I know many people make these choices because they uh, they feel the need to try to secure any leg up in achieving excellence. So they want to provide for themselves and provide for their future families and just, you know, what I mean, um, rub elbows with people that are like minded and on the same trajectory. Um, measured. Um, by Christian standards, that's a good thing. The fact of the matter is God calls us to excellence, right? Um, but even having said that, um, I think it's just important for, for, for us to, to have had this discussion today so that, because um, there was something Pastor Trey said earlier in terms of, you know, the level of maturity that we would all have at that age. Yeah, for some of us, it's been a minute, but we were that age too, and we didn't have the insight that we have today. But what makes this conversation important for us is that now we can um, individually and collectively uh, practice what Pastor Trey has said that he himself has been doing in terms of, you know, just educating people in terms of the pros and cons of these situations. And ultimately, the the the, the um, decision is yours. Um, but at the end of the day. I return to um, my previous statement earlier on that God is enough. You know, when you're trying to achieve excellence, there's a reason. This there's a reason why my mother used to always tell us if everybody is doing it, <laughs> most times it's mm -hmm. not a good thing, right? And so, you know, um, be measured in 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 in, in the decisions that, that that you make regarding things like this and. Lastly, I'll say this. This is something my older brother told me, and I live by this. I live by this in my in my faith life, my spiritual life, and I live by this in all aspects of my life. Don't become a part of something that you don't fully understand. Mm. That's good. Yes. Right there. Mm. You know, I, I'll say um, my final remarks. Uh, we have to make a distinction between that, which is holy and that which is unholy you know that's that which is secular and that which is of god you have, you have to make a distinction there mm. and in the in fraternities and sororities it tries to blend both mm. um, but it's at the it's always at the expense of christ nice. it, always uh that's the way the devil makes it you know, he doesn't care if you have a God title, just as long as you don't live like it. Mm. <laughs> um, but those who are in wow. the fraternities and sororities, I feel you. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel you. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt and the scars, literally. Literally. Um, and, and was also traumatized to get in but bonded with the people for life. If you're in a situation like that, um, do the best you can to, to take a stand for what you believe is right. Um, and I don't want to sleep on the fact that there are some people out there who they need, they desperately need 
camaraderie. Mm. Um, people who don't seem to fit in anywhere. People who've been bullied, um, who for, for their own safety felt the need to get into organizations like this um, or for insecurity reasons, so forth and so on. And my heart goes out to each and every one of you. I wish the church had more to offer to fill the void. But many of our churches, for some reason, our young adults are not finding the kind of fellowship, friendship, and family uh, in the churches that they visit and attend. And so they find other other ways to fill that void. But uh, I would just say, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, even if you're in it, you can still take a stand. You don't have to take those drugs. You don't have to drink that alcohol. You don't have to sleep around when it comes to down to that point. You don't have to um, mm -hmm. follow all those things or even witness all those things. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, listen, I'm not going out tonight. Follow, let the Holy Spirit lead you. And um, um, you can still let them know. I, I will always recognize you as my brother and sister for life. That will never change. But if we're going down a certain path, certain road, certain decisions being make, made against my conscience, you know me. I just can't do that. I still love you, but I just can't do that. And that's what I've had to do through the years. Still am doing it now. And I have to say, looking back, I don't regret the decisions I've made, the things that I've done, because I tried to do the best that I could. And I, today I try to use it all to, glory, to the glory of God. Whenever I go back to that campus, because I'm a founding father, I can call anybody in the organization and they have to follow what I say. Guess where we going? We going to church. <laughs> <laughs> we use the best, your influence and use your connections in a way to glorify God. Everybody will respect it. They might not understand it, but they'll respect it and they'll know where you're coming from. Good word, good word. Professor Mike, come on. I, I would just say if, if, there is a young person that is attracted to the idea of being in a fraternity or a secret society of some kind to ask themselves, why are they attracted to such things? Because more than likely, there's something missing. There's a void in their life that they think can be filled by these things and these activities that in reality can only be filled by God. Mm -hmm. That's something that they really have to think about, you know, because a lot of times when we make decisions to make commitments to people, to romantic partners, uh, to things like a, a, a frat or a sorority, we don't really think about um, why these things are attractive. And, and oftentimes, as young people, we're unaware of the childhood trauma and family of origin issues that drive our decisions and that drive us to be attracted to certain things and certain people. So I think that's very important. And I would also encourage, strongly encourage people to look at the origin of yes. the secret societies and the Greek societies and, and frats and authorities, and to, to, to look at other secret societies that are more, um, that have a more dubious reputation like Skull and Bones and like um, the Masons and like the Jesuits and see what they're all about and see if they really, truly want to be connected mm -hmm. to something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and this is grooming them for that also. Right. Mm -hmm. Finally. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I want to say one thing real quick is that for some of you, you might have been totally fine going into college like I was. I wasn't. I was very solid. At least so I thought. So I thought I decided to go into it because a band of friends from the D.C. area, we all went to high school together. So New York had their frat. And California had their frat. Um, and so, you know, D.C., so they dragged me into it and be like, come on, Trey, come on. And, you know, it's all right. You know, you can bring the Lord into it and all this kind of stuff like that. But the thing is, is that you can't save anybody else. Only Jesus can save, mm. you know, and mm. you can't you might be getting it because your best friends in it or some of your best buddies or people you roll with or the person you're dating at the time, which we all know that can change. That's, those are not good reasons to get into it. Yeah. And also isn't, aren't there educational frats that are way different because I've heard of them. Well, that National Honor Society. They also use um, Greek letters 
and they, but they're more of an educational uh, frat. They're not a social organization as much as an educational one. No oath, no line. No, right, right. They don't have any any of those type of social things. But I, I, I've heard of other frats with people saying, "Oh, we're 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 this particular frat or whatever." But then he said it was an educational. I don't know if you all have heard of of that. Mm, uh, yeah, National Honor Society has uh, Greek letters associated with it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're yeah. not talking about those today. That's not what we're talking about. Just want to make that clear. That's not what we're talking about. Just the one uh, performing rituals. Mm -hmm. Rituals. Mm. So you know, my final message is that anyone who's listening today, just like you've seen um, some testimonies of two individuals, at least three individuals who were formerly members of Greek organizations, but later renounced it. If you find that the organization that you're a part of, um, if you see error in your participation and, and you've had a change of heart, we just want you to know that just like the others, that you can make a decision to get out of it. You don't have to stay in it for the rest of your life. You don't have to you don't have to, while nobody's going to tell you to tell everything that you've seen other people do, uh, you don't have to continue in that. And you can, as some of these individuals here that we've shared, they actually renounce it. They wrote official letters and said, I renounce it. I'm no longer part of this organization. Take my name off the, off the books. That's making that official. And, uh, and so you will not be alone if that's how you feel. And you may make that decision. And you pray and ask the Lord to God and direct you, and he will keep you. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That is the final word there. Gentlemen, it's always good. Appreciate you guys coming. And I'm um, looking forward to next month when we'll have another. Next month, I think we're going to have to talk about here. I'll give you a preview. And I think we're going to have to talk about this whole, you know, uh, are people going to have, are there going to be children being born after Jesus returns? And are there, is there going to be any marriages after? Now, understand, I haven't said immediately when, but after the point of Jesus' return. Because we have a lot of people who <laughs> want to get in on the sex part of marriage now by any means possible because okay. they've read the scripture that said there will not be any marriages Given in marriage, once we get to heaven, it ain't worth it. It's yeah. not. I'm telling you, right? It's, it's, it's not worth it, and he has something in store. So you got to you got to come back next month on the third, the third Sabbath, and and and, and we'll that sounds it. very interesting. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, have a good rest of your Sabbath this whole okay, day. Lord, you. Talk soon. All right.